Okay, good morning, everybody. I would like to welcome you and call to order our planning committee meeting for today. Uh, it is 9.07 and we will begin. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, the few um, housekeeping items that uh, we are running this meeting electronically in accordance with section 238 of the Municipal Act 2001 due to the COVID-19 virus. I will confirm that we have a quorum. I believe the only one we're, oh, she just came in. Okay, we have everybody present. Uh, we have our senior um, management present. And, um, and so that's great. And also there was input invited by a planning at muskokalakes.ca for all of the items on our agenda today. And as we probably all know now, motions are populated on a random basis. And we're going to use the old hand sing signal to, um, to vote. And if that doesn't work, we will call for everybody to vote, but it will not be a, a um, recorded vote. So I think that takes care of that part of it. Uh, there is no supplementary agenda today. Uh, is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest from anybody? No? Okay, that's great. We have no invited uh, delegations today. So I believe we can start, we can get started. So our first, um, our first uh, zoning bylaw amendment, I believe Mr. Sharp is going to take us through that. Good morning, Mr. Sharp. Good morning, can you hear me okay, uh, Chair Bridgman? Good morning, Chair Bridgman, members of planning committee, applicants and agents, and members of the public. The first applications to be heard are consent application B slash 02 slash 20 slash ML in the name of 5021901 Ontario Incorporated and zoning bylaw amendment application ZBA-05 slash 20 in the name of Tuckner. These applications have been submitted concurrently. The Tuckner property is known municipally as 1805 Peninsula Road, unit number 133. I would direct the committee's attention to the submitted consent sketch and draft bylaw beginning on page 15 of your agenda package. The purpose and effect of the applications is summarized as follows. The applications have been severed, apologies have been submitted to sever a portion of land and to provide an exemption from the definition of a lot. The benefiting lot and proposed severed lot are separated by a municipal road allowance and cannot effectively merge to form a singular lot. However, the two lots will be considered as one lot for planning purposes. No new additional lots are being created. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 21 days in advance and four submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by the District Municipality of Muskoka, Planning and Economic Development Department. Cassidy Fior, District Planner, advises that the district has no objections and would like to be notified about a decision. The second submission is by Neil Donald, the Township's Chief Building Official. Mr. Donald has no Ontario Building Code objections. The third submission is by Ken Becking, the Township's Director of Public Works, and Mr. Becking has no objections, provided the benefiting lot receives no additional development rights. The fourth submission is by Chris Taylor, an area landowner. Mr. Taylor requests to be notified about a decision and confirms in his submission his understanding of the intent and purpose of the applications. I have prepared a detailed planning report for committee's consideration. If committee is considering recommending approval of the applications, staff have recommended standard conditions of consent, including a requirement for a consent agreement to be registered on title, requiring the benefiting and severed lots to be transferred together. This agreement will be registered on title and would be binding on any future landowners. Staff have also recommended two minor amendments to the draft bylaw. First, that a portion of the retained lot be rezoned to environmental protection to reflect a wetland feature on that lot. And secondly, that permitted uses on the severed lot be restricted to conservation and open space recreation. I have no further comments at this time and I would be happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sharp. So I do not believe that we have anybody here to speak on behalf of the applicant. Do we, Kelly? Just one moment. Mr. Fawner, uh, we, we're, this is part of the electronic part of this. We, we're going to assume Mr. Fawner is the one speaking to this and we'll let him in. Okay.
Mr. Fawner, I see you now. Just unmute yourself. Mr. Fawner? Yes, I'm here. Can you oh, okay, me? sorry. No, I, well, I can now. Um, we just, we assume that you're speaking on this first application? Yes, I am, thank you. Hey, please take the floor. My, my camera's taking a while, I think, to come up. But anyways, uh, normally my wife is telling me to mute myself, so I'm not used to unmuting myself. <laughs> this, this is your special day. Okay, please uh, go you. ahead. Thank you. Um, Steve Fawner, Northern Vision Planning uh, Limited, 109 Meadow Heights Drive, Bracebridge, Ontario, P1L1A4. Um, I'm here representing the Ontario Inc. number, and for those of you, the name behind that is Jay Hennick, uh, so if anybody has a conflict, I guess. And uh, the person who is uh, owning the abutting property receiving uh, the lands is uh, Stephen Tuckner, and he's actually my client, and he's the one paying the bills, actually. So. Um, Firstly, I'd like to thank staff for the positive report. Uh, it's a, a fairly simple lot addition, except that uh, we have a road allowance uh, between the two properties, so that adds a little bit of complexity. The addition of the lot, though, will not change any development rights on the front porch because the uh, severed uh, lot is all beyond 200 feet uh, from um, Lake Joseph, and that was uh, determined by John Hiley's office. Um, there's no change proposed in the zoning, it's OS2. Uh, I'll get to staff's comments on, on that in just a moment. Uh, there was a previous severance for anyone who's looking at the severance sketch. There was a previous similar severance immediately to the north of this. You'll just see how the lot configuration is. So this is uh, similar to what has been done in the past. I don't know any of the history of that particular application. Uh, that owner is now Mr. Chris Taylor. Um, my um, uh, client has been in touch with Mr. Taylor and I think uh, He's the one who's uh, just requested notice uh, of decision. Um, I don't have any uh, objection to the proposed conditions. The potential EP1 is really just along the eastern edge of the property. The wetland juts in at one particular point near the southern border. Uh, I think you'll see pictures uh, of that. Uh, the first picture of the staff report indicates that, and the first picture in my planning justification report also notes that small, very small wetland area that sort of juts in towards the road uh, from the east. Um, the lot line otherwise roughly uh, coincides with the uh, wetland. So again, my client has no objection to the uh, proposed conditions. And uh, I request uh, approval and I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have anyone else who would like to speak on behalf of this application? So does someone else with their hand up? Uh, sure. So I see we've just let Jens and Evelyn in. That's what's coming up on the screen. So um, our, if you're here to speak on on behalf of this application, please unmute yourself and we'll be delighted to hear from you. We have no questions at the moment. Thank you. Pardon me? Well, I, I'm a little unsure um, who, who you might be, if you wouldn't mind identifying yourselves. Yeah, we are, we are the owners of uh, Riverdale 204. And we're just joining uh, to, uh, to follow this uh, hearing and we have no questions at the moment. Okay, so I'm, I'm just gonna explain the process a little bit for you. Uh, we'll have those who are in favor speak to us, those who are opposed, and then Mr. Fawner will be able to do um, a, a wind up or a rebuttal if that's the case. And then it turns back to council. So that would be the end of your ability to have any input, just so you understand that. Um, I don't want that to be a surprise to you. Okay, so thank you. Um, if you're just here to, to listen, then we'll probably take you out of the waiting room and you can listen um, on um, YouTube. Okay, so uh, anybody who looks like they would like to speak against this, Kelly? Nope, okay. 
Yeah, you know, well, just <clears throat> yes, just bear with us as we get through the. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Are we okay? Okay. No, there is no one there. Um, Mr. Fawner, I don't think I don't think you need to speak again, as there was no comment before that. So I am going to bring it back to council for any questions, comments, whatever. Why can't I see him? Oh, I'm sorry. I, you were up above my screen. Uh, Councillor Jaglowitz, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, just before I speak, I'd like to uh, just declare that I live on Riverdale Road, although I do not, and I also am involved in maintenance on the road, but not this portion of it. It's a different, it's a different portion. So I have a couple of questions for Mr. Fawner. Um, my first question, Mr. Fawner, is that um, I'm trying to understand the reason for this severance, and I'll explain to you where my where my um, where I'm going with this. The property to the north that has that little piece cut out. If you'll look at the actual plan, you'll see uh, that is a road that goes around Mr. Taylor's property to get to Boxers. That's the reason that was severed off. Uh, the Boxers and uh, um, uh, they they were related, but now they have a separate entrance. The other reason that was given for the severance is be for privacy, but privacy from what? I know there is going to be a bell tower, but it'll be a, a, tremendous, a tremendous distance from this. And then the third thing I would ask you to address, if you don't mind, is that the property to the south of it, I believe that your, this property is owned by the numbered company, who's also your client. They have uh, gone into that open uh, OS zone and created quite a large cutout and at present are storing a lot of materials and construction things, but it kind of looks like there may be something else happening there. Um, and maybe I'll just give you my last question. I know, I, I know it's a smorgasbord and that is, and, and you may understand there's a triangular piece of property where the roads, um, uh, separate to the south and that's not shown as being owned by this property and I wonder if you could address whether that uh, what's going on with that piece there was some talk about that being donated to the township to allow that road to be improved so I wonder if you could address those issues thank you thank you Mr. Fawner uh, yes uh, I'll, I'll do my best to try and answer the uh, mortgage mortgage question um, the uh, first one, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, Boxer certainly was an owner to the north uh, and still is. I, well, they may have sold, but he, of course, gains access from a different location now. So I don't know the history of it. I guess the point that I raised regarding this being similar um, to the one to the north is just really to line up the property lines. I guess I wasn't saying that the purpose was necessarily the same, um, but I just wanted to point out that at least it lined up with that property line. So it, uh, uh, it wasn't creating a, you know, a job into the property, that kind of thing. It's, um, it's sort of like squaring off, if you will. So I think that's, that's why I, I mentioned that. The purpose of the application is strictly for privacy. Um, my client actually, I, and I say my client, uh, he's actually Mr. Tuckner, who owns the abutting property. He once owned these lands on the east side of the road lounge. When he sold it to, um, uh, to the Ontario Inc. number, who is uh, Mr. Hennig, they themselves had their own private agreement that he was going to retain this piece. He just wants it for protection behind his property. Um, I don't think anything will ever be built back there because really the OS2 doesn't permit much, uh, but he really just wants to protect his privacy at the back behind his property. Uh, he has no plans whatsoever for it. In terms of the uh, property to the south, um, there is a cutout, I believe, now I, I was only retained to do the application, so I don't know really much in the way of details of this uh, retained parcel. Um, I think that area cut out though, I think is being used um, as a sort of a construction area for the uh, lot that's being built on. I think it's two properties to the south of this. There's a rather huge, dwelling and uh, development going on on Lake Joe. And I think that little cutout is being used uh, to park some equipment. That's just from my personal observation uh, from being in there. 
Uh, that's the extent of what I know about that. Okay, thank you. Uh, would anybody, anyone else have any questions or comments? No? Well, then I will read the motion. Uh, moved by Councillor Kelly, seconded by Councillor Mazan, be it resolved the Planning Committee recommend to Township Council to approve consent application B slash 02 slash 20 slash ML bracket 5021901 Ontario Inc. Roll number 4 12 029, 4 12 029 20, and 4 12 045 6, subject to the following conditions that a registrable uh, description of the severed lot and any required right of way be submitted to the secretary treasurer along with a registered copy of the reference plan. There's a consent agreement under section 51 bracket 26 of the planning act be entered into with the township and registered on title requiring the benefiting and severed lots to be transferred together. The confirmation be received that the township is satisfied that the resultant lot is satisfactory for on-site sewage disposal and that any problems identified with any existing sewage system be corrected to the satisfaction satisfaction of the township. That a zoning bylaw amendment be approved to rezone a portion of the subject lands containing a wetland from open space dash private OS2 to environmental protection EP1 and that a zoning bylaw amendment be approved to define the benefiting and severed lots as one lot for planning purposes and to restrict the permitted, permitted uses of the severed lot to conservation and open space recreation. What did I miss? Oh, sorry. And that zoning bylaw amendment application ZBA-05-20 and related bylaw be approved. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, thanks. Any comments? All right, then I will call for all those in favor. We good? Okay, that carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, yes. Okay, thank you. Now we're on to our next one, which is um, again, um, Mr. Sharp. So Mr. Sharp, could you take us to Meg Como, Cornia? I sure can, thank you, Chair Bridgman. The next applications to be heard are consent application B slash 04 slash 20 slash ML in the name of Maggia Como and zoning bylaw amendment application ZBA-09 slash 20 in the name of Maggia Como and Cornia. These applications have been submitted concurrently. The subject lands are known municipally as 1110 Campbell's Road, units number two and four. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted consent sketch and zoning sketch and draft bylaw beginning on page 62 of your agenda package. The purpose and effect of the applications is summarized as follows. The consent application has been submitted to sever a portion of land and add it to an abutting lot in the ownership of Heather and Cornia. No new additional lots are being created. The zoning bylaw amendment application has three components. First, it will permit a change in common lot lines. The Maggiacomo property is zoned waterfront residential WR4. In the WR4 zone, the original dimensions of land cannot be altered. This means that land in the WR4 zone cannot be severed or reconfigured without a bylaw exemption. In this case, the retained lot is intended to have one and a half acres of lot area. Second, it will grant a bylaw exemption from the maximum cumulative width requirements for shoreline structures on the retained lot. As the frontage of the Maggiacomo property is being reduced, exemptions are required to recognize the resultant width of an existing dock and single story boathouse. The maximum dock width is 75 feet. The existing cumulative dock width on the retained lot is 79 feet. The maximum single story boathouse width is 56 feet. The existing cumulative first story boathouse width on the retained lot is 60 feet. Third, the zoning bylaw amendment application will grant a bylaw exemption from the minimum setback requirement of 66 feet from the high watermark for a new driveway on the resultant Cornia property. The proposed driveway is to be 55 feet from the high watermark at the closest point. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 21 days in advance and four submissions have been received to date. The first submission is by the District Municipality of Muskoka Planning and Economic Development Department. Cassidy Fior, District Planner, advises that the district has no objections and would like to be notified about a decision. 
The second submission is by Neil Donald, the township chief building official. And Mr. Donald has no Ontario building code objections. The third submission is by Ken Becking, the township's director of public works. And Mr. Becking has no objections. The fourth submission is by Tom and Lori Campbell, who are area landowners. Edwin Campbell, who is an area landowner, and Elizabeth and Carl Savalinen, sorry, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce that name, who are immediate neighbors to the west of the Maggiacomo property. They have no objections. I have prepared a detailed planning report for committee's consideration. If committee is considering recommending approval of the applications, staff have recommended standard conditions of consent, including a requirement for a consent agreement to be registered on title, wherein the benefiting landowner will agree to implement the recommendations of a scoped environmental impact study that has been prepared at the request of staff to address potential environmental impacts associated with the proposed driveway construction. This agreement will include requirements for frequent reporting and contractor sign off that he or she has read and understood all of the requirements of the scoped environmental impact study and the consent agreement. I have no further comments at this time and I would be happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sharp. Uh, would there be the applicant or applicant's representative? Yes, Corn, okay. Just one moment while we bring in Mr. Cornu. Mr. Mr. Cornu, if you could unmute yourself, please. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, we can, go ahead. Excellent, thank you. So my name is Tom Cornu. I am the spouse of Heather Ann Cornu. I guess that would be the, the benefiting property. So thank you for your time today. Uh, and I, I have a lot of thank yous, but I, I won't go through them. And the staff helped me. This was my first time doing something like this that I thought was seemingly simple. And, and, and I learned a lot about bylaws and understanding them. Um, you know, the, uh, I, I think it was characterized very well. The, the only point of clarification I, I would make, and I don't know if it's relevant, uh, but I, I think it's interesting. The, the uh, application refers to driveway and parking area. I don't plan any changes to the parking area. That, that's been existing for a long, long time. It's just connecting the driveway to the parking area. Um, and there, there is a, a piece that is within that, uh, that 66 feet. Um, so that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do all these things right. I, I accept all the conditions, uh, the uh, impact study and the environmental study. I, I, I'm delighted to, uh, to support those. Uh, you know, this is a beautiful property. It's a natural property. And it's very important to me to keep this very natural. But the, the access has become, uh, I, I would say, dangerous. Uh, difficult and and continues to to get worse so I'm, I'm looking for a, a much better solution uh, this this proposal is 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 all about that I mean I, I you know if my parents were to come by uh, I would have to drive up and get them and bring them back down uh, so I think this is a logical access uh, way to do it and uh, I'd be delighted to answer any questions I also think it's it's probably the least invasive opportunity for me to to achieve what I'm hoping to achieve. So uh, I know you guys have a lot on your plate, so I'll, I'll be brief and, and there and happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to speak on behalf of this application? Doesn't look like it, Kelly. Okay, uh, anyone against? Nobody? Okay, great. All right, so then we're going to bring it back to our planning committee for any questions or comments, committee? All right, there being none, I will read the motion. Moved by Councillor Edwards, seconded by Councillor Jaglowitz. Be it resolved, the planning committee recommends to Township Council to approve consent application B slash 04 slash 20 slash ML, Maggie Como, Roll number 4-19-044 with the following conditions. That a registrable description of the severed lot and any required right-of-way be submitted to the secretary treasurer along with a registered copy of the reference plan. That a legal undertaking be submitted in order to confirm that the severed lot will merge entitled to the lot that it is being added to upon registration of the transfer slash deeds. That a consent agreement under section 51 bracket 26 of the planning act be entered into with the township and registered on title wherein the owner of the resultant lot agrees to implement all of the recommendations of this of the scoped environmental impact study eis prepared by beacon Envi environmental and dated may 2020 the 
confirmation be received that the township is satisfied that the retained lot is satisfactory for on-site sewage disposal and that any problems identified with any existing sewage system be corrected to the satisfaction of the township and that a zoning bylaw amendment be approved to permit an exemption from waterfront residential WR4, minimum lot requirements and cumulative shoreline structure with requirements on the retained lot. And the zoning bylaw amendment application ZBA-09-20 and related bylaw be approved. Any comments? Uh, all in favor? Councillor Zavitz, could you, um, can we see your hand or not hand? Okay, well, this is going to carry, so yeah. it's not a problem. So, okay, great. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thank you. And you, you're welcome. And yes, our staff uh, is, I, I believe, um, excellent at working with, with with our our constituents so okay so we're now on to um bylaw amendment application for giverts and i believe mr allen that this is yours thank you good morning committee members of the public uh, this is a public meeting for zoning bylaw amendment application 1120 in the name of giverts the lands are known municipally as unit 33 sugarloaf island on lake joseph and are presently in the ownership of Adam Giverts. The lot presently contains two dwellings, a two-story boathouse, which has recently been removed with sleeping cabin above, a one-story boathouse, docks, a privy, and a shed. The purpose of this bylaw is specifically to provide an exemption to the maximum permitted cumulative dock width of 25% of the lot frontage up to a maximum of 75 feet. The applicant proposes to construct a two-story boathouse and associated docks resulting in a cumulative dock width of 137.5 feet, which is 18.8% of the lot frontage. And the existing cumulative dock width is 112.5 feet. The purpose of this application is also uh, to permit an increased width of first story boathouse, the maximum being 16% of the lot frontage on Lake Joseph, up to a maximum of 75 feet. The applicant is proposing a cumulative first story boathouse width of 84.8 feet, which is 11.6% of the lot frontage. The applicant is also proposing to convert one of the existing dwellings into a sleeping cabin, resulting in two sleeping cabins on one lot. The zoning bylaw only permits a maximum of one sleeping cabin per lot. The applicant is also proposing to expand the sleeping cabin that is proposed to be can reconstructed above the two-story boathouse. The expansion is 252 square feet. The zoning bylaw prevents an expansion of habitable floor area of a sleeping cabin where more than one sleeping cabin exists on the lot. The applicant is proposing to convert dwelling number two into a sleeping cabin. Dwelling number two has a 4.9 foot front yard setback. The conversion or change of use of this dwelling into a sleeping cabin requires the front yard setback to be recognized. The minimum front yard setback is 66 feet. In 1993, there was a previous bylaw amendment passed on this property. Bylaw in 1993-173, the bylaw was approved specifically to permit an addition to a dwelling on a lot containing more than one dwelling. Uh, this addition has been constructed and the proposed bylaw in front of you will result in two sleeping cabins on this lot, no longer two dwellings. So this bylaw is no longer needed and is proposed to be repealed for administrative purposes. So in summary, this bylaw will have the effect of permitting a cumulative dock width of 137.5 feet, permitting a cumulative first story boathouse width of 84.8 feet, permitting a two sleeping cabins on one lot, permitting the expansion of a sleeping cabin on a lot containing two sleeping cabins and permitting a sleeping cabin with a front yard setback of 4.9 feet and finally repealing bylaw 1993-173 for administrative purposes. Uh, th there's a staff report attached to your agenda which includes photos. Uh, there are existing and proposed site plans found on page 106 and 107. We've received a number of submissions related to this um, application. The Simcoe Muskoka District School Board, the District of Muskoka and the Township Emergency Services, Development Services um, and Public Works Departments have no objection to this application. We have received two submissions from neighboring property owners. 
Um, David Shaw, who is an owner on Sugarloaf Island and his uh, property is contiguous with the Giverts property. They, he fully supports the construction of the proposed new boathouse and to maintain the existing boathouse along with the existing green cabin. We have also received a letter from Kathy Doherty and Lisa Winfield. They are new neighbors and also the previous owners of the property on Sugarloaf Island that holds the two cottages and two boathouses, which are owned by Adam Giverts. Uh, one of the boathouses is being rebuilt at this moment. Um, it's noted in this letter that Mr. Giverts has applied to keep the old cottage and cream boathouse. The old cottage was built in 1891 and consists of four rooms, no plumbing. We would very much like to see or love to see, excuse me, this building uh, stay as is. There's no need to tear it down at all from our perspective. The cream boathouse is the old crib dock and provides great fish habitat. It's close to the existing cottage that has been renovated and only has a, one small slip and is a small structure. We as the neighbors and prior owners do not support the, the destruction of either of these buildings and they hope that these comments will assist in making your decision. Those are all of the comments that have been received to date and staff would be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Uh, would the applicant or representative be just coming into? Yes, the agent from Landscape Estate. So that would be, oh, Stefan. Okay. Uh, good morning, Stefan. Please take the floor. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, members of committee. It's uh, a pleasure to be in front of you again after many months. Um, in keeping with uh, the mayor's comment earlier, my comments will be brief and hopefully you can get out of here before uh, 10 a.m. this morning. Um, my name is Stefan Sherback, Planscape, 104 Kimberly Avenue in Bracebridge, and I'm the planner representing the owner, Adam Giverts, uh, who is also logged into this meeting and is uh, looking to uh, introduce himself and participate and answer any questions uh, that members of the committee may have with this application. Um, I've read the staff report. And I'm supportive of their comprehensive uh, policy review and positive recommendation. Um, I'd, what I'd like to do today is just reiterate three points um, that follow the general intent and purpose of this application and provide uh, committee members with a, a bit of additional information. Um, the first is uh, the reconstruction and enlargement of the existing two-story boathouse with attached docks. Um, if you were to look at the structure um, on a vacant parcel of land uh, as a standalone structure, I just wanted to point out that this um, boathouse and dock um, uh, structure itself complies with all the applicable provisions for a permitted two-story boathouse. Uh, for example, the total width of this structure, uh, the entire structure, the widths of the first and second stories, the size of the second uh, floor sleeping cabin and the height all comply with the general direction and provisions of the uh, comprehensive zoning bylaw. The second point is um, to consider the, the size of the island and size of the property in terms of frontage and area. It's a, a very uniquely shaped property having two separate distinct and uh, large frontages uh, along the lake. Uh, the additional shoreline structures and incre increased widths uh, requested in front of you today, um, specifically on properties with large, larger frontages uh, contain official plan policy directions where additional widths and additional structures could be contemplated if uh, there's potential severance uh, provisions in place for the, the, the subject land. Uh, the same is true for water access properties. Um, the uh, uh, official plan permits or considers uh, uh, review of additional widths uh, in some instances and um, specifically for, for this property. Um, noted earlier that there is a second single story boathouse that's developed along the westerly shoreline um, and that's found on the last page of the staff report just uh, to follow along. Um, both the boathouses have formed part of the built form and character of this island for many years. Uh, it is a very historical property. Um, if you note on the plan, both structures are located a fair distance from each other, separated uh, substantially, and they also have uh, quite a distance from the adjoining side yard setbacks. So they are positioned to form separate structures and distinct uh, structures on the island. With respect to the total width um, that's requested, if you were to take a look at the single story boathouse associated with the uh, current dwelling, you'll note that there's approximately 25 feet 
uh, of the total shoreline that's associated with a, a, a dock that projects out to the side and parallel with the shoreline. The purpose of um, this dock having been out on the property, um, if you can, see, it might be difficult to see, but the door of the boathouse is actually on the side. So this dock is necessary to walk a boat into the boathouse structure. It's a very small uh, structure. And uh, again, it's been in place for, for many years, uh, but I just wanted to point out that it, uh, it, it takes into consideration 25 feet of the uh, requested width. Um, finally, uh, as noted by Mr. Allen, the applicants have two existing legally uh, complying dwellings and one sleeping cabin above the, um, the, the former two-story boathouse. This proposal will convert one of the dwellings to a sleeping cabin and the resultant uses will be one dwelling with two sleeping cabins. Uh, when I attended the site, the owners have already removed the kitchen facilities in the one uh, existing dwelling, so that has been converted already as we speak. Uh, so this proposal, in my mind, uh, brings the property further into compliance with the direction of the OP and the zoning bylaw. Um, in summary, the proposal in front of you was based on many discussions and negotiations with staff uh, to conform as closely as possible with the overall direction of your official plan. We concur with staff that the proposal clearly conforms to the existing policies of the official plan and it represents good planning. And most importantly, uh, just to note that the built form will generally remain the same as to what has previously or historically existed on the property. Um, and the application in front of you is essentially to replace the existing two-story boathouse uh, that is found on the westerly shoreline. Thank you very much, and I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you, Mr. Sherbeck. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming at this point in time, the applicant doesn't want to speak or doesn't need to speak. I'm sorry, he put his hand up? Oh, sorry. Okay, his hand went up. This is the electronic heard of this again. Um, we'll just get him in. Mr. Giverts, would you like to speak, please? Just unmute yourself. Thank you, Madam Chair and committee members. Uh, my name is Adam Giverts, and I am the owner of the subject property. Uh, I will be brief, but I fear I'm going to be redundant, so my apologies in advance. Um, as has been discussed, the property had two dwellings and two boathouses, one a single story boathouse on the westerly shore and the other a two story boathouse on the southerly shore with a second story sleeping cabin. Uh, we're replacing the one boathouse on the southerly shore, which was built in 1910 uh, with a modern boathouse. And while our application on its face appears to be extensive, it really isn't. Um, the key to our application is that the number of buildings on the property is not changing. Um, what we're really asking for in our application is to keep the existing boathouse on the westerly shore and to convert the, the other dwelling um, uh, on the southerly shore to a sleeping cabin. Uh, and has been noted, we've already removed the kitchen from that, that building. Um, in, in my view, to put it another way, what we're asking really in essence is to maintain the status quo um, the boathouse in question that's been standing in that spot for 60 years and the dwelling that we would convert to a sleeping cabin has been standing in that spot for more than 120 years. Uh, both buildings are very modest and frankly extremely humble by modern Muskoka standards. Um, as has been detailed, the shoreline is extensive and extremely well treed and allowing these buildings that have stood in place for 60 and 120 years respectively really has no incremental impact on the built environment. And rather than tearing everything down and doing a lot of blasting, which we would be required to do on this lot given its steepness and building a 7,500 square foot dwelling and a new boathouse, we have decided to maintain the status quo uh, with an upgraded modern boathouses, but the total number of buildings remains the same. Um, what we're asking for here uh, particularly when you compare it to the scale of other building that is taking place on Lake Joseph is, is quite de minimis, which we believe staff has recognized in their report. And I believe the committee should see our application in the same light. So thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Uh, thank you, Mr. Giverts. 
Uh, is there anyone else who would like to speak on behalf of this application? No, I'm seeing no. Uh, anyone opposed? No. Okay, great. Um, all right, that's terrific. Then I'm going to turn it back over to committee now for any questions, comments. Anyone? Okay, we're not very verbal today. And so I'm going to read the motion. Moved by Councillor Edwards, seconded by Councillor Jaglowitz. Be it resolved, the Planning Committee recommend to Township Council that ZBA 11 20 Giverts roll number 4 24 024 be approved. Any discussion, comments? All in favor? Madam Clerk, you have that? Okay, that carries. Thank you. Okay, so we will move on then to our next one that I believe is Mr. Allen uh, again. And uh, Lane is the name and Mr. Allen, take it away. Thank you, if you just bear with me while I set up my screen again. Thank you. This next item is a public meeting for zoning bylaw amendment application 1320 in the name of Lane. The lands are known municipally as Unit 147, Tobin's Island, Lake Rosso, and are presently in the ownership of Catherine and Christopher Lane. The lot presently contains a dwelling, a sleeping cabin, a shed, and a dock, and the applicant is proposing to remove the existing dock and construct a new boathouse and associated dock in a new location on the property. The purpose of this bylaw specifically is to permit a dock with a maximum length of 100 feet, the maximum dock length being 66 feet. The existing dock that is proposed to be removed is approximately 70 feet of length. The purpose of this bylaw is also to permit a maximum first story boathouse length of 84 feet. The maximum permitted boathouse length is 50 feet. The purpose of this bylaw will have the effect of permitting a dock 100 feet in length and a boathouse 84 feet in length. You'll find um, existing and proposed site plan drawings on page 121 and 122 of your agenda package. We have received um, comments of no objection from the Simcoe Muskoka District School Board, the District of Muskoka, as well as the Township's Emergency Services, Public Works and Development Services Department. Be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Uh, would there be the applicant or a representative who I believe is just coming in? Mr. DeBoer. Mr. DeBoer, I think you're going to speak on behalf of, uh, of this application, so please go ahead. Good morning. Uh, my name is Tom DeBoer with TD Consulting. Um, can anybody hear me there? Yeah, okay. Um, I'm just here if there's any additional so, questions. So, excuse or... me, we need your address. Just uh, give us your address, please. Yeah, it's 155 St. David Street in Lindsay. Um, and if there's any additional questions or concerns, I think uh, the manager there has done a great job explaining the proposal. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, is there anyone else waiting to come in? Who's for? No one opposed? Great. All right, I'm going to turn it back over to uh, our committee then. Are there any questions? Uh, Councillor Jaglowitz? Yes, thank you. I have a question for Mr. DeVoer. I'm looking at the, um, <clears throat> the pictures of the boathouse, the front view, and I see there are two wet slips, and then there's another door that appears to be on, on a deck. What's the purpose of that, uh, that part of the boathouse? It's just for additional storage of uh, cottage chairs and, and the like where that we be having on the dock. So it's just for indoor storage of the stuff that would be on the exterior of the dock when it's not in use. So, so there's, there's no plan to, to have anything in there in terms of uh, 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 appliances or, or whatever? No, there's, there's been no contemplation for that at all. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mayor Hardy. Uh, thank you for that. Um, I, I don't have a problem, by the way, with the uh, doors on the side. And uh, if there's a little seating area in there at the same time, you can get out of the sun. Um, we don't allow gazebos on the end of the dock, or I think we're just starting to allow them. 
but um, sometimes you need to get out of the sun when you're down at the water. So uh, um, it, it's, it is part of life. Uh, we don't have any specific regulations on it right now. So um, the only question I have is if you look at a couple pages prior in the um, staff report, you see the neighboring boathouse uh, that is built on the shore. And, and I am quite familiar, know a number of people along that shoreline. I know it's shallow in there, and I'm assuming that's the main reason for pushing out uh, further into the waterway. But um, my big concern is as we move one out, then the next neighbor, when he does his, wants to move out. And on page 114 of our agenda package, you'll see the neighboring boathouse is built up against the shore. Um, are you that much more shallow in your area? Or have they been able to manage? And you know, currently at your 70 foot dock, I, you know, you have a couple boats parked at the end and maybe you have to trim up, but I'm just trying to understand as we uh, start to build more form further out in the waterways. Right, so this has a, a rock formation just out from the actual property itself, which does not give us any navigable depth. And that's the request for the extension of the dock. Understood, thank you. Yep. Uh, Councillor Allen or Edwards, sorry, sorry, Allen. Hi, uh, I'm, I'm just looking at uh, page 114, and right now there's two boats there, and they're not out, out that far. Um, I do have a concern with the, the layout of the uh, boathouse. If you're going out another 34 feet, and that that's a that's a, a large area in the lake. And I don't know why, if you're just having it for storage of, of chairs, you can't make it a little bit longer towards shore and, and shorten that boathouse up because uh, you've got another 10 feet on, on that that you really don't need for, for boat storage. If, if you look at the drawings there, that extra part that, uh, that Councillor and that Jaguar said uh, it's, it's an open, it's just storage there. It could be moved to the back of that and, and make it shallower. That area is shallow, but you can get a boat in the way it shows there. So uh, I, I think it, it's, 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 it's moving uh, it out in the lake and then everyone else is gonna want it. And uh, I don't see the need for it at this time. I don't have a problem giving a, a two-slip boathouse, shortening it up and putting that storage in behind. But I would not be supporting going out uh, uh, 84 feet and that because of the one that the neighbor's right against you. So, Councillor Edwards, what would you be supportive of in terms of length? Well, I could, like he could go out what he wants, the 84 feet, if he if he got the width of it down. So there was only basically the the, the uh, two uh, boat slips going in there. And that other section that's in uh, shaded in white on, on uh, 123 was actually moved to the back of it. And that, so it's, it's not as wide because like, uh, and that, we start getting all these boats uh, and that, uh, the uh, boat houses going out 84 and 100 feet and that. It, it, it's not uh, it's not the intent. Uh, I think to, to get that, I think uh, the applicant should maybe give up a little bit of, of width. That's just my uh, view on it, but I would not be supporting it the way it is. Okay, thank you. Mr. DeBoer, could I get you just to mute yourself while you're not speaking, please? Um, thank you. Uh, Mayor Harding? Thank you. Just a uh, technical question to staff. Um, they're not asking for a variance on the width. So this bylaw, this boathouse complies with the width of our uh, current bylaw. Uh, it's only an exemption for the length for the distance from shore, correct? Mr. Allen? Through you, Chair. Uh, that is correct. The, the boathouse and dock comply with the bylaw in all other regards except for length. And, and just uh, for, for committee's um, note, I'm not sure if you've had the ability to zoom in on page 122, the site plan, um, but Mr. DeBoer has provided water depth um, information in the location of the proposed dock and boathouse. And you'll see at approximately 100 feet from shore, um, the depths are range from 2.5 feet to 2.83 feet um, at the furthest end of the dock and boathouse. Uh, we don't have policies in our official plan that speak to boathouse length, 
specifically. Um, generally speaking, the township has used you know, 36 inches or three feet as being the minimum depth required to float or dock a boat. Um, we have had applications in the past for long docks. Um, I think one of one of the the, the challenges specifically with um, with views of these structures that extend out into the water is that they can be viewed from any number of different angles. So removing width from one portion and lengthening it for another portion could end up or will end up resulting in a larger form viewed from some angle. So I, I think, you know, from my perspective, it's it's about the length of the boathouse. Um, but committee could uh, recommend any uh, any modifications that they they desire. Thank you, Mr. Allen. I'm going to go to Councillor Nishikawa, and then I'll come back to you, Councillor Edwards. Thank you. I know this may se seem frivolous or whatever, but it's uh, something that I deal with most weekends uh, is the big floaty stuff that um, people are, are bringing along. And I, I have a concern now when we extend our docks and I still have that opinion that, um, you know, sometimes not all properties are suitable for the same thing that a guy down the road has because he has a better lot or different lot or, um, and, and I don't think it's our role as a municipality to create all of the great things from another lot that people may have even paid a lot more for and were more suitable for some of these things. I don't believe it is our role to create all of those um, things that come with, with better suited lots. Again, I'll go back to my original concern is, um, how do we get a message across to even this particular application that you don't, it's not a good practice in my opinion to go out so far and then stick a bunch of floaties out there another in many cases 20 30 feet uh, so i'm a little concerned about that because again i'm being asked to go out to look at properties on the weekends where people are not allowing others to um, even gain access to their own docks because of these floatables. And I know we addressed this at a planning meeting and we didn't get very far. Thank you, Councillor Nishikawa. And, and yes, it's, it is a different topic, but it, it is noted. Uh, Councillor Edwards? Uh, yes, I'm well aware that uh, the, the width of, of, of the boathouse meets our, our requirements, but going out 84 feet doesn't. So if you want the same width, just keep it at 66 feet or, or change it. And that it's, it's a, a plate on, on the lake going out that far. We are uh, trying to, uh, to, to keep everything uh, uh, environmentally friendly and everything else like that. And as uh, the mayor had said, one goes out 100 feet, the next one's going to want the same. So I, I think that there, there should be something there. Uh, it should be a little bit of a give and take on that. Uh, but like I say, uh, the, 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 the width that it is now, I would move it back to 60, uh, to the 50 feet. And that, they can run the dock out uh, 100 feet and walk the boat in, but uh, it is going out too far, in, in, in my opinion. Thank you. Councillor Jaglowitz. Am I permitted to ask Mr. DeBoer a question or do I have to deal with council? No, you can certainly ask a question. Okay. Mr. DeBoer, um, uh, um, Councillor Edwards uh, made some suggestions. He talked about shortening the length or, or shortening the width. Is there any of those that, would, uh, that you could deal with? Mr. DeBoer? <laughs> Sure, yeah, the, the primary concern still remains the same just shortly after the, um, the shore itself, where there's sort of a point in the shoreline on the drawings, there's a large rock mass and that's sort of where the back of the boathouse is going to be sitting. Um, once we project the boathouse out as far as we have and we've sort of set it back from the dock, um, we still don't have the three feet of navigable depth in the normal water level. So I'm a little concerned as if we're pulling it back, we're gonna end up uh, placing it in very shallow water and also have to build it around this rock that's uh, currently in the water. 
So would you then consider uh, changing the weight? I guess that's an opportunity. Um, it's just, uh, I, yeah, we'd have to basically redesign the structure to see how that would look. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I, I, I would like to get a little bit of a feel here for this application in terms of um, if we want to vote on it now or perhaps defer it if there's enough concern to see if uh, our applicant could work with some of the suggestions. So I just, uh, anybody have any thoughts on that? Councillor Jaglowitz? I would support a deferral if the applicant would uh, 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 take the time to, or, or indicate that he's willing to uh, consider it. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Roberts. Uh, I, I was going to say the same thing. Thank you, Chair. So, Mr. DeBoer, I'm getting the feeling that we, if we could defer this, could you go back to your client and see if you might be willing to rework a little bit of this? Okay, so just so that we're clear, we're talking about the physical width of it, and it appears as though the room that's on the side, uh, the storage room, should be at the rear of the boathouse. Is that the consideration that we're speaking of? I believe so. Councillor Edwards, do you want to redefine that again? That's exactly what I, I thought, and that a little bit, uh, the width narrowed down and go back a little bit longer, put the storage in, in, in behind. Because like I say, I could support going out 100 uh, feet and 84 feet for the, the uh, boathouse, but I, I would like to see it uh, compressed a little bit. That, in, in my opinion, that would be uh, a better fit for the, uh, the area. Can I, I I'm, I'm gathering because I'm not hearing anything else that we're generally, that's what we'd like to send you back with Mr. DeBoer. And we will just put this on hold if that works for you. Okay, just so that I'm clear, based on the sketches, that room is uh, nine foot eight inches. Is that the reduction that we're looking for? Uh, I'm going to defer to Councillor Edwards. Approximately? I don't see where I am. Uh, yeah, that would and oh, that okay. would be fine. Also, the the uh, the middle section there, you got five foot three, which is a lot. You could shave a little bit off of that, but I I would get it down, uh, you know, where it, it, it it's workable, and that. But uh, you know, if you take at least ten feet or more off, that would be great. Thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Allen. I was looking over at the uh, little blue hands, not the real ones. So please, please go ahead. Apologize for using the wrong hand. Um, through you, uh, we've run into situations with applications in the past where requests were made and a deferral was um, was questioned. It, it sounds like this application may be able to move forward with a tweak to the design of the boathouse. Um, committee can make a recommendation to council that this application be moved forward provided we receive revised plans that show that reduction in width that would prevent a deferral and having Mr. DeBoer to come back to planning committee and then having to have council make a, the subsequent decision. So uh, I know that Mr. DeBoer has waited and his applicant um, has waited a long time because of the COVID delays for this public meeting. Um, so if, if it would be possible to, um, to make any changes between now and the council meeting, um, that, that is an option that the committee could consider. Thank you, excellent point. Um, Councillor Nishikawa. Thank you, um, Mr. Allen. I, I just, um, but I'm very concerned that, that we are actually going down the route that council is now becoming designers. Um, that is, is not the way that we should be approaching this. And my concern is, and we've seen this before, where we say to somebody, redesign it this way and in fact it comes back to council and it isn't what the rest of council wants uh, but again we should not be involved in in designing uh, it either fits with our bylaw 
or it doesn't, the message gets sent back, much what has been said, reduce it by whatever percentage should be the way that we should be messaging it uh, or, or numbers, but not redesign. Like we shouldn't be getting involved in, because in fact, we never voted on that. Um, I would be happy to move this application towards a vote um, today and um, go from there. Thank you, Mayor Harding. Uh, thank you. Um, at the risk of uh, sticking myself out on a limb, which I like to do occasionally, um, I, I agree with Councillor Shikawa. It is not our job to design boathouses for people. What I've heard, yes, the boathouse is out further, so we determine and we've pushed out many, many boathouses to allow for water depth in the past. What seemed to come up at the beginning of this discussion is the fact that uh, there's storage on one side of the boathouse and some people don't like storage on the side of the boathouse so you don't need the storage it can be back of the boathouse um and uh i i don't believe necessarily that's our job i haven't heard any negative complaints from the neighboring properties on this application and um i will say again if there is storage or a chesterfield or a chair out of the sun i think that's okay. They could shrink the width of this boathouse and have a big massive dock and have the chairs outside. Everyone sat in our OP review committee can have a flat top boathouse and sit with sun deck chairs and no problem. I can put them out on the dock and have no problem. But as soon as I wanna put a portion of my boathouse in covered area and have a chair, it's not allowed. Though it's still storage. So um, I'm not sure where the applicant wants to go with this. I do not want to redesign this boathouse. It, you know, if we don't want the storage, put a third slip in there. Now we get three slips, more boats on the waterway. So, um, you know, careful what we ask for. Councillor Mazan. Thank you, and through you, um, I apologize, I can't seem to do my, my blue hand. So I appreciate that. Thank you, Chair Bridgman. Um, a question for you, Brian, is it easy for you to put up a picture um, of what we're actually looking at? I, just so that we are understanding, um, I'm trying to look at the site elevation and maybe it's just me, I'm technically uh, at a disadvantage here. But I, I think the two things were being asked, and I, I guess I'm asking for clarification on this, is one, there's an exemption for going out 100 feet, and the rationale for going out so far in that, this property is because of water depth. So I guess I'm just seeking clarity on that. And then the second thing is there's an exemption required for the, the width or the length of the boathouse. And I, I just think it would be helpful to see this visually on the screen so that we all know what exactly what we're looking at. Is that possible? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yep, Mr. Allen, um, Mr. Pink is saying he can do the screen share if you prefer. I can share my sc screen too, unless I have some technical limitation on my end. So, and then that would be great. And then if you can answer uh, Councillor oh, Mazan's questions. I cannot, I'm not a host of this meeting, so I am unable to share my screen. Um, Mr. Pink, the the elevation of the boathouse that shows the two wet slips and the one dry slip, as well as the, um, the site plan that shows the water depth and the proposed dock and boathouse. Those are on the agenda, if you don't mind pulling them up. Okay, just give us a minute, we're working on it. Um, while that's happening, Councillor Jaglowitz, do you have a comment? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask, I'm a bit confused on the depths, uh, and, and I, I'm looking at, uh, is it possible for someone to explain the water depth at the, at the edge of the boathouse? Uh, Mr. Allen, can you take us through that? Sure. Um, I, I think the depths are pretty self-explanatory. It's how deep the water is in that location. And there are specific uh, points or dots that are identified along the length of the boathouse. Oh, I so see. Close to the shoreline is zero feet and about a hundred feet out from shoreline, it's, it's a 
approximately three feet or less than three feet, 2.5 feet at the, the shortest or the shallowest. Oh. So, so am I still, can you still hear me? Yep. So are you saying that at, at the outer edge of the dock, which is 100 feet, it's under three feet? Is that, is that what you're saying? Right. Just and in, one, in one location, it's only two and a half feet deep, 2.5 feet. At the deepest location, it's it's 2.3 feet deep. I see. I had a chance to visit the property and we did boat through that area. Uh, I could tell you that I didn't have my bathing suit on, but I would have been very nervous to dive. Okay, thank you. Um, so Mr. Allen, could you answer um, uh, Councillor Mazan's uh, two questions for us? If she wouldn't remind repeating her question, I, I thought that it, it was maybe a little bit vague. I think she asked, what is it exactly that we're looking at? And I, I wasn't sure that what that specifically applied to. Um, there's a site plan that shows the dock as well as the boathouse um, from the plan view, the top view above. That's on page 122. And then on page 121, there's the front elevation of the proposed boathouse, which shows the two wet slips. And, and the dry slip with the door closed down. Thank you, and yeah, front. thank you, and through you, I, this is the helpful one. I was, I was trying to get to that. Um, so the 100 feet out, I'm just seeking clarification, 100 feet out is primarily to um, allow a water depth to, to be able to bring boats in and out safely. And if you were to jump off a dock, you actually are jumping into water. Uh, just jumping into water. To your point, you might not want to dive. Is that, and I'm, I'm clarifying that. And I guess the second thing is, um, I'm seeking to understand, and I don't, I agree, I don't think we want to get into design, but the conversation is, do you shift that living area, or not living area, but the area that's shaded that has a couple of chairs in it in behind, and it's more of a storage in behind. So that is the question. I think I wanted to be sure I was understanding that. Okay, thank you. And and actually, Mr. Allen, I'll do a follow up to that. The, the design we're looking at on 123 fits into all of our bylaws, does it not? I mean, the only thing we're talking about here is the length of the dock. That's my understanding. Correct. The dock is, is approximately 34 feet too long and the boathouse is approximately uh, 34 feet too long. So th those are the only asks that are on the table at this point. All of the development complies entirely with the remainder of the bylaw. So as a supplemental, and we haven't heard from anybody else that there's a complaint on, on the built form that's being recommended. Those are the two things that we have to make a decision on. Are we okay with it going out further to accommodate water depth and understanding that that's also making the, the boathouse longer? I just wanted to be sure I was understanding what I'm voting on today. Yeah, uh, that is correct. I see Mr. Allen. Uh, yes, so. Okay, so I, I thank you. And I, um, I am not into redesigning boathouses either. Uh, so, and I, if a water depth is that, if it's that shallow, then I could see supporting this application. So I just thought I'd chime in on, on that part. So what I just didn't want to do was perhaps have this defeated if, if that was the route we were going and allow, allow our applicant to rework a little bit of it. But there is that other option that Mr. Allen pointed out that we take it forward and ask for some changes if I have enough councillors who want to do that. Uh, Councillor Roberts? Yes, I, I just wondering about the precedents we are setting. I forget who mentioned it earlier, it mis might have been uh, Mayor, Mayor, uh, Mayor Harding it, or, or uh, Councillor Edwards that when people buy the buy a piece of property, they they know the depth of the water, and uh, other people have bought pieces of property with deep water, and are we now trying to accommodate to give everyone a boathouse in deeper water that wouldn't be possible and farther out from shore? And that, that's my concern. So it's uh, that's what's what's really what's really bothering me here right now. Okay, thank you, uh, uh, Councillor Jaglowitz. 
One other thing that would help me is if I knew the depth of the water at the end of the existing dock, which is 70 feet out. Is that possible? Is that known? Mr. DeBoer or Mr. Allen? I'm not sure who. I don't have that information, no. My point was, are we shifting the boathouse into a sh more shallow area? Or would it be better if it was in the area where the dock is now? And then maybe the length wouldn't be the problem. That, so. so maybe, could I then maybe suggest that we um, advance this to council with the provision that we get those depth measurements before it comes to council? Suggestion, um, Councillor Zavitz. Thank you, through you, Chair. Uh, I, I certainly reflect on uh, Councillor uh, Roberts' comments. I uh, two two things. First of all, you know, having looked and bought many properties in Muskoka over all these years, yeah, the first property we always would stay away from is one that has no waterfront. It actually has no depth of water. Um, here we are accommodating, and, and so to that end, I don't know what to what extent we can go, but I know as environmentalists, and we ran on that scenario, here we are looking at a, an actual, for the first time that I can recall, an actual three-slip boathouse with only two boat slips, and the third one looks sure looks to me like there's televisions and things going in it. So um, I hate to go against what the mayor has just said, but... Is this not the first time we as a, a, a group have actually been confronted with a three slip boathouse, which is really only two boat slips, which if we go back to the beginning of time, a boat slip is for a boat. So there's three, three doors here. I guess the third one is, is a sofa or to the mayor's words, a Chesterfield slip. Um, I'm not gonna support this. Thank you. Okay, Mayor Harding. Thank you. Just a comment uh, in, I, I don't believe there's probably been, uh, let me just say at least 75% of boathouse applications these days and anything new that's built has had some form and I'm going to go be bold and call it a sitting area down at the water in the shade. You don't have to go very far around the lakes to see that. Two thirds of this boathouse theoretically are for water slips, for boats, for everything else. There is one boathouse I know that has no slips and is massive. That is totally agreed. I agree with that. That is not the intent of a boathouse. But to be able to house two boats and have a sitting area inside, my opinion is I don't have an issue with that. Councillor Roberts' question about precedence and people have certain lots. We sit around here and ask, and people ask us for variances and zoning bylaw amendments because every lot is slightly different and slightly unique. There is a large two-slip boathouse in Maple Leaf Bay, just north of Windermere by our public dock. The boathouse doesn't even start to 75 feet from land and then goes out because it's shallow. The neighbors don't have the same issue, but that's that particular boathouse. So there are many places around that we grant these variances. Um, and it, it's only a portion, the whole boathouse, as I look at this diagram, is not out at 80 feet or at 84 feet, asking for the 34. There's a, uh, just depending on where the shoreline is, some is out more, some is out less. So um, again, I, I'm happy to follow council. I do not have a problem with this application. Okay, uh, Councillor Zavitz, and then I'll go to Councillor Kelly and then Nishikawa. Thank you, just a supplemental to speak to that mayor. Um, if, sorry, through you. Uh, Chair, <laughs> we're just making a wrong right. If we accept this as we are, what I'm telling, what I'm saying here, Mayor, is that this is the first time it's actually been in our face. I mean, certainly I get in my boat and I see, I see what you're talking about. Of course, I acknowledge that they're there, yet we as a group uh, were elected, as I understood it, in many discussions, that that was one of the many things that we're wrong with here and we needed to uh, take some sort of a stand. I agree, the sun's a killer. I've had surgery because of the sun. I, my boathouse, I have, I have umbrellas, and, but, but I don't have a recreational area with the gorgeous televisions and this, you know, that's my point. I don't, I don't think we should be going down this road and I won't be supporting it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Kelly. Uh, thank you very much and through you, um, uh, 
like Councillor Zavitz, I think this is part of what we were supposed to be addressing uh, with our with this new council. Uh, but I can't get past the fact that I heard the uh, applicant's representative offer, or at least uh, uh, agree, to uh, take this issue back to his client and see if there are some modifications he can make to make this thing less objectionable. And uh, I'm happy to uh, hear what comes of that. Thank you, uh, Councillor Nishikawa. Thank you. Uh, much along the same uh, that Ms. That, um, Kelly just said, the I I would not be approving this application as it is today. However, I would like to to give the applicant the opportunity to work with staff. Uh, for me, in particular, that storage is a problem whatever you want to call it. Um, and I, 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 but again, I'm not going to redesign this, this thing. Uh, I have a concern because um, again, it is not my role as a counselor to make something more valuable for someone else. Um, essentially that's what, what, what we do. So, um, and again, knowing that people have waited months and months to get things on moving forward, I would suggest that perhaps if, if there is an inkling of, of something that we want to see happen on this property, that we move the application forward with suggestions that we want to see change, then it can come to council. Mayor Hardy. Uh, thank you. I have a, a, a question to staff and probably uh, Director Pink in specific. Um, we suggest that first stories of boathouses are for marine storage related equipment, so on and so forth. Um, let, let's say half of our boathouses have decked in slips with sitting areas and uh, bars and uh, wet sinks uh, and televisions and, and much of that stuff in bathrooms that appear in building plans. And there are many boathouses, again, I don't know many that are currently built. Why, why is our bylaw department out there if that's completely illegal to have a couch inside? Are we not out there enforcing bylaws or why are people not complaining about it? Or how are we letting this be built? Mr. Pink. Thank you through the chair. Um, the zoning bylaw is clear that uh, boathouses are defined to be used uh, for marine related storage only in the first story. Uh, we require on building permit drawings if that's the case, uh, but I'll be the first to admit that is a, a challenge to practically enforce that in the field. We do get the odd uh, complaint and we do investigate and uh, I think typically what happens is the patio furniture and other amenities are removed. Um, likely to then be reinserted back. It's a never ending sort of battle and game that we play. Um, uh, but as you know, we work on a, uh, on a complaint basis. And I wouldn't say this is the most common complaint, uh, but they do come in and we do try to address them uh, when they come in and we ensure building permit drawings show compliance. Uh, but it is difficult to police everyone sitting in their, in their boathouse and putting furniture and using it as habitable space. It's uh, a very difficult challenge. Right. So, um, Mr. Allen, and then I'll go to you, Councillor Hayes. Thank you, through you. I, apparently, I don't have a blue hand because I'm a co-host. I only have my hand. Um, I think in, in addition to Mr. Pink's comments, I would note that the zoning bylaw actually doesn't require boat slips inside a boathouse. Um, the way that the permit process is set up for a boathouse is a dock permit is obtained first dock is constructed and then a boathouse permit is subsequently attain, obtained and the boathouse is constructed on top of the dock. There's, there's nothing requiring a specific shape or design of a dock. Um, the boathouse is regulated by its length, width, coverage and height. Um, the use of the internal portion of the boathouse is limited to storage of boats and marine related equipment only. So, so technically any boathouse could be constructed with no slips in this township. And that is uh, something that well, we have brought forward to council in the past. We brought a, um, an information report 
um, to raise concerns that we were seeing an increased number of complaints and, and people not using the first story boathouse in compliance. And Mr. Pink actually identified himself as the, um, as the fun police, if you recall that conversation. So it's, it's definitely a difficult, um, a difficult situation in this township and, and the bylaw doesn't help um, things at all. Oh, sorry, Councillor Hayes. Okay, I, I think that the storage area is a little bit of a stumbling block, but you have to remember, this is not a two-story boathouse, it's a one-story boathouse. So that is the only storage area that we'll have. And it appears that they are planning to have uh, large chairs and tables out there. So they do need a larger area. Um, I would like to give the, um, them a chance to go ahead and make any modifications that have been suggested and uh, move this forward to uh, council with whatever changes can be made. Okay, so I am I am getting the sense that we are going to vote to move this on to council, but we would like to see some changes made to this and and I think we need to give some direction to Mr. DeBoer on that. And I'm going to suggest that perhaps the length goes down. I'm just not sure what, what council wants. I, would, I, I, I personally would like to know what the depth of the water is at the current boathouse. I think that's an excellent question. Because if there isn't much change in the depth of the water, there's no need to put this out this far. So to me, that's the critical question for me. If the rest of it comes within our bylaws, I, I, I don't have an issue with it. So that would be my input. I would like to see, now I'm going to recircle and say, what else are we going to suggest here to Mr. DeBoer? Councillor Edwards, what are you really looking for? Uh, well, water depth is, is the one thing that should be checked. If they have to move the, the, the boathouse along the shoreline to, to get that, that would be fine and put it within the 66 feet. If they have to go out that, and then I would like to see uh, the actual width um, shortened up, as I had stated before, but I'll leave it with the uh, council. But uh, like I say, uh, it, it was stated some properties just aren't uh, uh, actually nature didn't design them for that. So I don't think we should have to, to bend over backwards to, to help somebody get something to that will uh, in, uh, impact the whole lake. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is see if I can get a nod of heads here. Uh, we want the water depth for sure. We need that beforehand. How many would like mm, uh, Councillor Edwards comments on moving that storage back? knowing that it's within, I, I, I have to restate this, knowing that, that it's within our bylaws. So who, can we, anybody, anybody want to see that? So I think we may be down to the water depth. If I'm incorrect on that, then somebody jump in now. Okay, Mr. DeVore, oh, Councilor Jagowitz. Yeah, if 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 the length was uh, dealt with, um, I I could support the width. So I, I I think it comes back to if there's suitable water depth somewhere else in front of the property to put that that wouldn't go out past the existing seventy feet. That would be a good solution. Okay, if there's not, then I guess we need to know that. Right? But I I think the applicant's agent has heard what we said and I think he knows what we're looking for. We're not all unified on it. There will be a vote at council and he just has to take his best shot to get most of us satisfied. That's the way I see it. Uh, Councillor Kelly. Uh, thank you uh, and through you. I, I, I may be the only one who is particularly struck by the fact that we have such a high value on, on the uh, development of our waterfront that quite honestly that's why most of us are here and here we are considering a variance to allow a bigger development to build a storage closet 
um, there has to be a better use for the waterfront or a more sacred uh, approach to developing waterfront than to say, go build a bigger closet. And that's it. That's where my position, that's my position on it. I believe that's our OP review, Councillor Kelly. So we can put some teeth into that. But that's my, my comment. Um, let me see, where am I? I think Councillor Nish Nishikawa. Thank you. Uh, I agree with Councillor Kelly and, and Councillor Edwards. Um, this isn't where I want to give a variance on storage. So, or on, and therefore the width, depth, whatever that all works out. This isn't how I want to um, conduct my, my, the business of, and, and I don't want to say, well, today we can do all that. If we could do all that, we wouldn't be here. And we wouldn't have to say, oh, let's wait for the OP. The reality is this is here today and we're being asked of what we want. I don't happen to like the location of that storage area. Uh, I don't want to give a, a variance. 34 feet's a big variance. I don't want to give it for a storage area. That's all, you know, and, and whatever that looks like on paper, um, I'll wait to see because otherwise I would be turning everything down at this time. I'm more than willing to see what comes forward to a council meeting, but I can't support it. Uh, so the applicant knows I can't support what is in front of us today. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Zavitz. Thank you, Chair. I'll be abstaining from this vote. And uh, the reason being, um, if I have heard David Pink and Ryan Allen correctly, uh, this is wrong. Uh, the minute we allow this, if we do today allow this, permit this to happen just as requested, we'll immediately begin to receive complaints on this particular build because of that third piece, which I don't know why we're talking about it like a closet. It's not a closet, guys. It's a crest liner in slip one, it's a nautique in slip two, and it's a Samsung in slip three. There's no question in my mind as to what we're looking at here. So I will be abstaining because I, I, I think we need uh, to draw a hard line. Thank you. Uh, Director Pink. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just to clarify, and again, Mr. Uh, Allen did raise this earlier. Staff did identify this issue quite some time ago. I think over here, we did bring a report to committee um, that we are seeing on virtually every building permit, uh, a large uh, non-slipped area in boathouses with the clear label that it's going to be used for storage of marine related equipment only. And we realize that that's likely not the case in reality. Uh, we brought forward a staff report that outlined a number of options for council to uh, consider that and either uh, permit that or, or address that and, uh, and put an end to the practice. There was no direction provided to staff and hence we continue to struggle with these applications when they come forward. Um, what I'm hearing generally, I, I think the consensus I've generally heard, we are not here to design people's boathouses and I would concur with that comment. I think the consensus I'm hearing is there's a concern with the overall width of the structure and the overall uh, length of the boathouse. I think the dock everyone is happy with, uh, the boathouse. So what I can do is amend the resolution to state uh, that it be approved to council, but subject on a reduction in boathouse length and a subject to a reduction in boathouse width, as well as confirmation of water depths of the existing boathouse. I would uh, reflect to Mr. DeBoer. Uh, I think Councillor Jagowitz put it correctly. Put your best foot forward to council. There's clearly some concerns. I would encourage you to bring the structure as close to the compliance as possible uh, in order to have a favorable outcome. Um, if that's the general consensus, I think maybe that can put an end to the lengthy debate and we can we can move forward. Okay. Thank, thank you, Director Pink. I believe that's true. I, I think I'm going to put a something else on that. If we can note at our next planning committee meeting to bring that report back, because it looks like this this group now has an appetite to deal with that, whereas we didn't give you direction before. So that will come back on our next uh, on our next agenda. I hope I'll, I'll confirm that with Director Pink. 
Um, and actually, maybe it's it's actually, I believe, Mr. Allen, because I was going to mention that he he actually has taken over doing our agendas and getting us going on this meeting now. So um, uh, thank you, Mr. Allen. It's been a good meeting uh, this morning. So thank you. So we're just, uh, just waiting for uh, for Director Pink to uh, uh, put the amendment in here. Mr. Allen. You don't mind my interruption. Uh, Mr. Pink had mentioned um, confirmation of water depth information around the existing boathouse. There is no existing boathouse. There's an existing dock. Just thank if, you. If the wording we'll is going to be specifically included in the resolution. Okay. Thank you. Chair sure, Bridgman, if I can just comment, I know that um, Councillor Zavitt said that he uh, was going to abstain from the vote. Just as a, a point of order, the clerk can confirm the abstention of a vote is also a no vote. So you can vote against, but uh, abstaining is a no vote. It doesn't mean any difference. Okay, thank you. All right, I'm going to read this motion. Be it resolved, the planning committee recommend to Township Council that ZBA 13 20, lane roll number 4 28 070 be approved subject to a reduction in boathouse length, boathouse width, width, and confirmation of water depths in the location of the existing dock. Any comments? All in favor? Good. Okay. So that that carries. So Mr. DeBoer, we'll I believe we'll see you back at council next next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, group. And I don't believe uh, we have anything else on the agenda. There is um, an unfinished business. I just wanted to mention to everybody that the last meeting we had, we talked about. Um, what we want to see in condominium agreements that to let the um, to discuss that in detail and uh, it was left with councillors um, letting Mr. Pink know what their thoughts were. Um, we apparently have had no thoughts on this so it's not on the agenda this month. I'm uh, happy to put it back on for next month, uh, but we do need to have some input for that. So I didn't want you to think it's gone away. It just didn't have, and I can't imagine why with all the meetings and, the, and everything else we've had, I know, I know. Um, just to let you know that. So uh, if we get any input on that, it'll be on our agenda for next month. And because I'm gonna have input, it will be on the agenda for next month. All right, any new business? No? All right, then I think we are good to adjourn, Madam Clerk. Oh, okay, great. Um, uh, Director Pink's going to give some updates on LPAT. Thank you, Chair Bridgman. Just uh, very quickly uh, on the LPAT matters, uh, there's only one uh, matter to note. You may recall a zoning bylaw amendment in the name of Tom. It was for a dock uh, width on an island, the name eludes me, on Lake Joseph. They applied for a minor variance. That minor variance was defeated and they had appealed that decision to LPAT. They subsequently did make a rezoning application to council, which council did approve. Uh, I'm just uh, merely flagging uh, for council's information that uh, they did therefore withdraw their appeal uh, to the minor variance as they did receive uh, the zoning approval. Uh, again, in the name of Tom, T-H-O-M. Happy to answer any questions if there are on that. But uh, actually, LPAT matters are a little bit slow um, because they have just slowly started to get into uh, digital hearings. And it's uh, they've really started with uh, more uh, smaller uh, hearings where it's manageable with the number of uh, participants. So um, they have a bit of a backlog. Um, so there hasn't been too much action on the, on the LPAT front recently, but we did have that one withdrawal. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pink. Uh, any other new business from anybody? I think I saw no. Um, then I'm going to read the resolution to adjourn. And Councillor Hayes, you, you weren't in uh, before the beginning uh, for our next meeting, our smaller meeting. We're just going to stay on this Zoom meeting. 
that works for you. And I think we'll take after after we um, close this out, we'll take a five minute break before we start that next small meeting. Okay, um, moved by Councillor, Councillor um, Hayes, seconded by Councillor Zavitz, be it resolved the planning committee adjourn at 10.41 a.m. And the next regular meeting of planning committee be held on Thursday, September 17th, 2020 at 9 a.m. electronically in the council chambers, municipal offices in Port Carling, Ontario. So all in favor? Great, okay, well, thank you everybody and uh, have a good day and a, and a good weekend. <laughs>